This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on creating killer titles in Final Cut Pro 10. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to style your text. There's actually a lot of formatting that we can do, and when we open the inspector, there's two buttons that show up, Title and Text. Title controls any built-in animation that's associated with the title. We'll talk about that in a minute. Text allows us to change the formatting. When I click on text, there's two basic sections, basic and style. This will be relevant in just a few minutes as we talk about saving styles. When I go to basic, this allows me to change the font. And one of the nice things about selecting the font is you can see the actual font itself as you scroll through. We're going to work with Cooper Black just because it's nice and solid. We can adjust the, the size, whether it's regular, italic, or bold. This has a single weight. Now notice when I drag the size back and forth, it goes to, you know, really, really small, like non-existent, to about 200 points, give or take a little bit. But the problem is that text still isn't big enough. A really cool trick is if you click here where it says size and type in the value that you want, you can make this much bigger than you can drag the slider for, which is what I've done. The slider goes to 288. I've sized it to 500. Additionally, if I'm dragging this down and I want to make a really precise adjustment, put your cursor either left or right of the slider, but in the track, and hold the Option key down. When you option click in the track, notice that it's changing by one point increments. This is true not just of font sizing, but it's also true of all the other track sliders throughout all of Final Cut. If you hold the option key down and click in the track, it allows you to make single unit adjustments. Styling settings are farther down. I'm going to press Command Return and select my text clip. Under face, if I click the show button, I can fill the text with a color. Now here, if I click the color chip, this opens up the standard Macintosh color picker and I can make the text whatever color I want. If, on the other hand, I click the downward pointing arrow, this opens up the motion color picker, a different way of choosing color with different shades of gray and different saturation. You can drag it to be whatever you want. In this case, we'll pick it to a, a medium light green. Opacity allows us to make the text more or less opaque compared to the background. And we can also blur the text, which I kind of find strange for the text. But you know, maybe you can create an effect so that makes sense. But we have other options. Notice here, I can also add a gradient. Now, the gradient goes from the top to the bottom. And this allows me to do two things. One, I can change the color by right mouse clicking and say, let's make this a, a yellow color, really light yellow. So it's going to go from light yellow to, in this case, we'll make it a dark blue. So this is my color change. And I can add another color change by clicking a box and say, make it go red. And it goes yellow to red to blue. You can add as many boxes as you want. Grab the box, drag it out, and it disappears. It's this top bar that we're not used to. This allows us to adjust the opacity. It's going to start fully opaque, that's white, continue opaque, and then it's going to go to be fully transparent. So not only is it shading into a different color, it's also shading into different levels of transparency. Opaque, opaque, shading to be transparent. And notice how as we do this, the bottom part of our letter starts to become translucent. Now there's a third choice, which is texture. And I've not found the texture to be as reliable as I would like. Sometimes it's lit, and I can do textures, and sometimes it's not lit, and I can't do textures. And it just grays itself out. So I've not really gotten in the habit of doing this. I use colors and gradients, mostly colors. But textures I haven't played with a whole lot yet. So we've got the ability to make additional opacity adjustments. We can have a linear gradient, or we can have a constant gradient, or we can have continuous gradients. It just changes the way the colors are interpreted. And you can play with that until you're happy with it. I'm going to go back to a solid color, except a different color. The green is just too much. <laughs> the next thing we've got is the ability to add an outline. 
to turn an effect on, you click the blue checkbox. If it shows blue, it's on. If it's black, it's off. Click Show. We've got a variety of things. We can use colors and gradients and textures again. You can mess with the opacity of the of the outline. You can increase or decrease the blurs. I tend to really work with the extremes. I tend to make the widths pretty high. Let's try 100 here. Notice that and change the blurs and change the opacity. Give ourselves something a bit more unusual to work with. All right, I don't use outlines that much. But again, remember that you can get much greater values by typing than you can by sliding. We'll just turn this off so small children are not offended. <laughs> we can add glows. And again, we have the same kind of glows. We have colors and gradients and textures. We can pick different colors and affect the opacity exactly the same as the typeface selection that we went with earlier, except it's affecting the glow around the letters. While I don't use outline or glow much, in fact, except for this class today, I don't use them at all. I use drop shadows continuously. And these are the settings that I shared with you a little bit earlier when I was going through the slides. I always use black as the color. The opacity is 90%, the blur at 1, the distance at 7, and the angle at 315. If we display this text full screen, Notice how easy it is to read that text, even against a textured background. You don't really see the shadow, but the shadow defines the characters and makes those characters easy to see and, and easy to read. And that's the whole point of putting title text in the first place, is that we want to make sure that the text that we have can be read. So that's styling, except what happens if I really like that? I want to use this again and again. Well, that's this really hidden in plain sight pop-up menu right up here. This is where you can access some really tacky font designs, but you can also save basic attributes, style attributes, or basic and style attributes. For instance, basic, remember that's the first section we looked at where we can change the font and its size and its alignment. Style is the typeface and the outline and the glow and the drop shadow. Or save everything. Notice, notice down here I saved Larry's title, which is the settings that we were just talking about. Now the good news is you can save as many custom settings as you want. The bad news is I have not yet figured out, nor does the manual discuss, how we could get rid of settings that we no longer need. As far as I can tell, we can't. So you want to be sure that, that you save stuff that you really are going to use more than once. The nice thing is, is that once I've got this perfectly configured, reusing it is as easy as selecting it. it just select the font or select the style or both. If you need to reset because you've applied something that you want to change, go back to basic text and shadow. And this takes all of your styling off, keeps the font, keeps the size, keeps the shadow, but gets rid of the styling. Or click on it again and say we could pick this. And notice that it's just changing the way the text is colored. Notice the drop shadows disappeared. Again, this just gives you things to play with. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all of our training videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. There's more than 500 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth, all up to date. Plus, members can attend any of our live power-up webinars for free. Our training covers both Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. This has been an excerpt of a recent power-up webinar on creating killer titles inside Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.biz slash store. And look for webinar 95.